بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اور تجھے وی سٹارٹ دی ٹاپک آف ریجسٹرز آل رائٹ ریجسٹرز آفٹر دس آئی بلیو وی اونلی ہیو ون ٹاپک دیٹ از دی سمپل ایس پاسبل آل رائٹ سیپ وی کال ایٹ سیپ آل رائٹ دس از دی سیکنڈ لاس ٹاپک دس از ریجسٹرز آل رائٹ Now, when we were starting the uh, sequential circuits and flip-flops, so I told you, first of all, that flip-flop is used to do what? It's used to store data. And what sort of a data? Flip-flop stores only one bit, all right? Flip-flop stores one bit of data. Okay? And if you are watching this video about registers, so it means that you have come along come through flip-flops first so you know in a great detail about the flip-flops flip-flop stores only one bit data that is it can store either a one or a zero all right but now a question arises what if we want to store multiple bit of data if i want to store one zero at the same time which means two one zero is a two it if i if i want to save it how can I save it somewhere so for that for that we have registers registers do what registers store n bit data with the help of what with n number of flip-flops all right so you combine flip-flops together in some manner how is that we'll see and you can save multiple bit of data this register is in common analogy to the daily use register let's say over here this is a register right i have what a single page this page is what this page is used to store data in it i'm writing on it right and so this is analogous to a single flip-flop when I combine a number of flip-flops it combines to give store multiple bits of data and this combination of flip-flops is called a register all right now I believe this is clear all right so the uh, n bit register uh, n bit register uh, uh, is made with the help of n number of flip-flops all right for example for for storing for example for example for storing uh four bits we need what we need four flip flops all right and let's say i i i have uh, these uh, these is i how i'm showing the the group of flip flops let's say the first flip flop the second flip flop and the third flip flop right so you have a d not you have a q not d1 q1 d2 q2 d3 and q3 right so this is how you give it the inputs you're giving it the inputs at d0 d1 d2 and d3 in some manner that we'll be seeing in a great detail all right you don't need to worry about that right, right, this is just a general introductory video and you're getting the outputs q0 q1 q2 and q3 you have the clock pulse you have the clock pulse given to all of them this clock pulse is given simultaneously to all the uh, flip flops which means you can say these are like the synchronous counter all right the clock is given clock is given simultaneously to all flip flops right and we also have the clear signal which is also the active low signal clear signal and this is and the clock is the negative edge triggered flip, uh, clock is uh, negative edge. the flip flops are negative edge triggered all right which means they operate on the negative edges of the clock pulse right now uh, you see that in this sequential circuit everything every operation depends on the clock pulse which means that we are bound to follow the clock pulse all right we are bound to follow the clock pulse this is something important if we want to 
save something let's say for example so we have to look for the negative edges in every circuit let's say we're talking on the negative edge trigger flip-flops we've seen the counters also on the negative edge triggers so the changes in the circuit happen on the negative edges of the clock pulse which means the clock pulse is of a greater importance but at the same time at the same time it is causing a problem as well and how is that so let me tell you let's say let's say this is the first negative edge and this is the next negative edge right this is the negative edge this is the negative. let's say the time period of this clock the time period of this clock is one uh, sorry the frequency of this 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 cycle is one megahertz right so which means the time period that is one over the frequency would be equal to one microsecond right so which means the time interval between the two negative edges of the clock pulse is just one microsecond and this means that if I have to store a data for a particular period of time that will only be stored for the negative edge until the negative edge has arrived and the negative edge arrives just after one microsecond so which means the data that we wanted to store is only being stored for one microsecond and after that one microsecond we have a garbage value it could be the same it could be different but the original data that is gone when when the negative edge the next negative edge has arrived so this has not caused a problem now let's say let's say this is storing the data for 100 microsecond if I want to store if I want to store data for 100 microseconds so what do I need to do well I've given the data once I've taken I'm taking the output one time I'm not giving the data again and again so what do I have to do it's vanishing after this one microsecond so what do I do I introduce a new variable over here a new control signal that is called the load control this is called the load control and this load control is of two types load control is of two types it could be either synchronous or asynchronous when this is synchronous the, the 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 register operates when the clock is high and when the load is high when clock is high and when load is high then will the circuit operate right and in the asynchronous case this will operate only when load is high irrespective of the uh, irrespective of the what irrespective of the clock pulse right so now uh, I wanted to store it for a hundred microsecond so what do I do what do I do uh, let's say this time let's say let's say this time let's say this time represents what uh, 100 microsecond this is just for an assumption right if this represents 100 microseconds so what do I do in this case I make the load signal low load when this is high when the load signal is high the circuit is operating properly which means for one microsecond after one microsecond it's gone but but if I make this load signal low now the circuit will not operate normally and the value will remain as it is until and unless the load signal is high and the next falling edge has arrived so now if I make this signal low for a hundred microseconds so what happens which means for this hundred microseconds the value is there what I want it to store right and when this value goes high now after this hundred microsecond now the flip-flop will start operating normally which means after at this point when the negative edge of the clock arrives the value is gone and our objective is also complete we wanted to save it for a hundred microseconds and we have saved that all right so that's about it that's about the introduction just a simple introduction to registers all right what is registers so we we saw it all right 
A flip flop is used to store a single bit of data. When we want to store multiple bits of data, we combine a different flip, we combine a number of flip flops into a group. This group of flip flops now can store multiple bits of data through some manner. And this group of flip flops now is called a register. That is all about it. See you in the next lecture where we see some classification of the registers. All right, that will also be just a short video. All right, the register is an easy concept. If you know the details of the flip flops in a great detail, and the counters we've also seen, those are also a little tough as compared to register. Register is the most simplest topic. So see you in the next lecture very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye.